What if I told you there's a simple book that has baffled the brightest minds for over a century? A book filled with mysterious symbols, unknown languages, and inexplicable illustrations. This isn't the plot of a fictional mystery novel. It's the real-life enigma of the Voynich Manuscript. Prepare to delve into the depths of one of history's most perplexing puzzles. Welcome to the captivating world of the Voynich Manuscript. Let's start at the beginning. The Voynich Manuscript, named after Wilfred Voynich, a Polish book dealer who stumbled upon this baffling book in 1912, has been confounding experts and enthusiasts ever since. Voynich discovered this enigmatic manuscript tucked away in a chest of books sold by the Jesuits to the Vatican. He later revealed his rare find in 1915, but little did he know, he had unveiled one of the greatest puzzles of the modern age. Physically, the Voynich manuscript is unassuming yet intriguing. It measures about 225 mm tall, 160 mm wide and is 5 cm thick, with a Renaissance-era cover made of what's known as limp vellum. Nestled within its covers are around 240 pages of vellum, a type of fine-quality calfskin parchment. But it's not just the parchment that's fascinating. The manuscript is filled with writings in an indecipherable script, a mysterious language that has led to it being termed Voynichese. Alongside the cryptic text are peculiar illustrations that further deepen the mystery. These aren't your run-of-the-mill medieval drawings. The manuscript is adorned with bizarre and fantastical plants that don't match any known species, astrological charts with unrecognizable constellations, and, perhaps most famously, intricate diagrams of nude women in what appears to be an elaborate network of pipes and baths. Each page whispers the promise of secrets yet to be unraveled, a challenge to our understanding of history and language. While the manuscript's current form dates back to the 15th century, its true origin is shrouded in mystery. The earliest confirmed ownership traces back to Emperor Rudolf II of Prague, who reportedly purchased it for 600 ducats. Rudolf II, renowned for his interest in the arts and sciences, including alchemy and astrology, may have believed the manuscript was the work of Roger Bacon, a 13th century English philosopher known for his scientific works. However, this link to Bacon has since been debunked, as carbon dating places the manuscript in the early 1400s after Bacon's time. From Prague, the manuscript's journey becomes murkier. It seemingly vanished until resurfacing in Voynich's possession, leaving centuries of its history unaccounted for, adding to its mystique and allure. Delving into the manuscript, its contents are as enigmatic as its history. The language dubbed Voynichese by scholars defies classification. It's unlike any known language or script consisting of over 170,000 characters formed from an alphabet of about 20 to 25 distinct symbols. Efforts to decode it have suggested it might be a cipher, an invented script, or even a lost natural language. But so far, no definitive meaning has been extracted. The manuscript is divided into distinct sections, each baffling in its own right. The herbal section, filled with illustrations of imaginary plants, seems to follow the format of contemporary herbals, but with a crucial difference. None of the plants can be linked to known species. This raises questions about whether these plants are fantastical creations, coded representations, or lost varieties from a bygone era. Then there are the astrological pages, featuring circular diagrams that hint at an understanding of astronomy and astrology. But again, the symbols and diagrams don't match any known astrological charts from the period, deepening the puzzle. Perhaps the most intriguing are the balneological, the study bathing pages. They depicting naked women in elaborate networks of pipes and baths. Theories abound about these illustrations, from allegorical representations to a guide of medieval health practices, yet none conclusively explain their purpose. Finally, the manuscript concludes with what appears to be practical instructions and recipes. These pages are filled with short paragraphs and bullet point-like markings, suggesting they might be a guide to using the earlier sections. But without understanding the text, their true purpose remains speculative, like the rest of the manuscript. The journey to decode the Voynich manuscript has been as enigmatic as the manuscript itself, attracting some of the finest minds in cryptanalysis, linguistics and computer science. The tale begins with William F. Friedman, a name synonymous with code-breaking. Friedman, who made significant contributions during World War II by breaking Japan's Purple Code, found himself captivated by the manuscript's unique script and illustrations. 
Leading a group of fellow cryptanalysts, Friedman's efforts were methodical and rigorous, yet the manuscript withheld its secrets, remaining an indecipherable enigma even to a mind as brilliant as his. Intriguingly, the manuscript's allure didn't diminish over time. Instead, it intensified with the advent of digital technology. In an era where computers could assist in decoding complex patterns, the manuscript became a testing ground for new techniques in computational linguistics. Researchers applied statistical analysis methods to study the frequency and patterns of the text, hoping to find a linguistic structure or hidden logic. Artificial intelligence, too, entered the fray, with algorithms designed to compare the manuscript's text to known languages. Yet each technological advance, while shedding light on the complexity and consistency of the text, brought us no closer to understanding its content. Concurrently, the manuscript has been a playground for theorists outside of the traditional academic sphere. Proposals range from the manuscript being an elaborate hoax or a therapeutic language exercise to the documentation of an alien civilization or a lost world. The manuscript has been poured over by historians, botanists and artists, all trying to find correlations in their fields of expertise. Some have speculated that the illustrations of plants could hint at an undiscovered pharmacopoeia, while others see connections to distant cultures and civilizations. The Voynich manuscript isn't just a relic of the past, it's a thriving mystery that continues to inspire and captivate. Online forums and communities buzz with amateur sleuths and enthusiasts sharing theories and findings, keeping the manuscript's enigma alive in the digital age. Its enigmatic nature has seeped into popular culture too. Featured in novels, television shows and documentaries, the manuscript often symbolizes the ultimate unsolved mystery. The allure of the Voynich manuscript lies not just in its unreadable text or strange illustrations, but in the collective human endeavor to make sense of the unknown. It challenges us to consider the limits of our understanding and invites us to imagine possibilities beyond the conventional, fueling our innate desire to solve the unsolvable. There's the perplexing nature to its text. Computational analysis has revealed that the entropy, or the measure of randomness of the manuscript's language is lower than that of gibberish, yet higher than that of typical languages. This intriguing finding suggests a structured, information-rich text. But what information? That remains a tantalizing question. The repeated sequences of characters defy the patterns of known languages, yet they don't align with any known cryptographic methods either. Is it a sophisticated code, an extinct language, or perhaps a linguistic experiment? These questions keep the manuscript firmly in the realm of enigma. Then there are the illustrations, each a riddle in itself. The plants depicted are unlike any known species in botany. Could they be symbolic, purely imaginative? or lost flora from an undiscovered land. The ambiguity extends to the astrological diagrams. Their layouts are reminiscent of known astrological practices, yet their symbols and constellations don't match with anything in historical records. Are these lost astronomical insights, or are they symbolic representations of something more profound? The balneological section adds to the mystery. The nude figures and the intricate systems of pipes and vessels they interact with are unlike anything found in contemporary or earlier works. Are these allegorical depictions of spiritual practices, illustrations of medicinal baths, or something else entirely? The manuscript's final pages, appearing to be recipes or instructions, further complicate its interpretation. Their format suggests practical use, but without understanding the preceding text, their real purpose is as enigmatic as the rest of the manuscript. In every aspect, from its language to its illustrations, the Voynich manuscript challenges our understanding of historical knowledge, cryptographic methods, and linguistic theories. It's a puzzle that has resisted not just interpretation, but even categorization, keeping alive the allure and mystery that have captivated minds for over a century. In envisioning the future of decrypting the Voynich manuscript, cutting-edge technology and innovative methodologies hold the key. One promising avenue is the advancement in quantum computing, with its ability to perform complex calculations at unprecedented speeds, quantum computers could analyze the manuscript's text in ways traditional computers can't, potentially uncovering hidden patterns or structures within its elusive script. As our journey through the enigmatic world of the Voynich manuscript concludes, we're left with more questions than answers.
This centuries-old book continues to intrigue and mystify, a testament to the enduring allure of the unknown in human history. Its secrets locked within an arcane language and bizarre illustrations remind us of the infinite mysteries that still elude our understanding. I have added a link to a PDF version of the manuscript in the description below this video. If you are interested in taking a look at this mystical book for yourself, what do you think the Voynich manuscript contains? Share your theories in the comments below and have a lovely day.